Hey everybody, it is Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the TGIF edition of Today in Sports Betting. I'm joined as always by my friend Scott Reichel to take a look at a little college basketball here. As always, we appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up for the video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Check out winnersandwiners.com for all your handicapping needs. Winnersandwiners.com, always free, 100% Every game, you will love it. They do uh, deep dives and predictions on every single contest. So, Scott, we get that out of the way up front and uh, and then ask you how you're doing today. Fine. Uh, I feel like everybody watching the actual start of March Madness basically had a heart attack tonight. Uh, whether you actually won your bets or not, every single game came down to the wire, which is a good sign, I guess. Unfortunately, uh, I was kind of on the wrong side of a couple of pretty bad choke jobs there. Uh, I had a play today on Drake minus one and a half. I don't really think I need to talk about it. Uh, truth is, I know Drake was down double digits, had a miraculous run. You're up four with the ball with 13 seconds left and have a four on one. What, what are we doing here? I don't know, man. I what are we doing? And then it. I knew that when it was a one and one, Drake got the ball back. I knew he was missing. No chance he was making the first free throw. But that didn't work out. Uh, Michigan State, I had... That didn't work out either, which was also a double digital. That was a double digital at the half, up five with a minute and a half to go. Rocket Watts might be one of the most useless players I've ever seen play 30 plus minutes. At Rocket game. Watts can't make a deep ball to save his soul. Him and Hauser were, Hauser made a three in the first half, but second half wise, they were both just awful. You know, it's, uh, it's, like, it's like when you look at those powerful, like the SEC teams, like your Alabamas and Georgias. And all of a sudden, and they, and they have terrible kickers. You're like, how can that be? And you look at Michigan State, you look at North Carolina, like, how do you have guards that are that shitty when you're that talented of a program? I'll tell you what, though, the worst player I saw on the court who actually played a lot of minutes was Sturtz, who was the, uh, was the white guard on Drake, who played like every minute of the game. And he had the turnover on the four on one, he had the, uh, jump ball turnover, uh, when they inbounded the ball, like up. Yep whatever he did absolutely nothing for the entire game and yet he played basically every minute it was actually crazy to watch drake just used nobody on their bench there are so many guys who you're just watching and going how does this guy start let alone make the roster i felt that way about so many people but anyway yeah my day and of course drake still of course drake still wins drake won which is bad that that one guy should play less if if but, he makes the free if he makes the free throw at the end and then makes the other free throw, he didn't even have to make the other free throw. I had it at one and a half. I think you did too, right? Uh, my play today was my play today was one and a half. My yeah. my so br- just, my uh, bracket thing I had one, so I pushed on that one. He just has to make but, the front end of that and then watch him clang a three pointer off the front of the rim. They just had to hold the ball on the four on one and just take a free throw. The game was over. But anyway, you know, start out with St. Mary's with Mount St. Mary's, very fun, up ten at the half, great time. Gave up a 10-0 run, run in about the first three minutes of the second half. Every team I bet on, I think, had some type of either bad beat or choke job attached to it. Norfolk ended up winning, but, boy, that was bad. Or are they up 19 well, in the second half? Yeah, see, and I ended up, I ended up playing the under there, so I was, I was happy. That was, that was an easy win. I sent in all my plays before knowing about the totals, so I was on the sides on those. So yeah, they all it all it all came down to the wire. You know, the last time a wire treated somebody as badly as it did tonight, I think it was uh, Maury from his wig shop in Goodfellas. Mm. Just not good, not good at all, my friend. Fun for the fans, though. Good time. Uh, the you know what? And in, in you know what? In, in reality, we're fine. It's it's all right. It's I'm not, I'm not going nuts about it. It was just a matter of there are so many just close games, and I know that if you're on the wrong side of it, it could be frustrating at times, especially when you beat some line moves. But at the end of the day. It's day one, or it's not even day one. It's day not even half. day one. No, it's day it's... half. Like it, you got a long way to go. So yeah. it if you get that discouraged about losing in the first day, and you're not going to be able to rebound from that, you're going to have a long tournament. So at the end of the day, I recognize you know it's just four games. We're doing every game in the tournament, so it's all good. We'll bounce back. No big deal. <laughs> Yeah, speaking and speaking of which, this is a pretty this is a pretty good deal because you know usually you and I talk about well I can't talk about that game I got a premium play on it or whatever but we have premium plays on every game and every and every total because we're doing the contest with you and me and Dave 
And by the way, if you're uh, if you want to get in there, if you catch this, you want to get the picks. We've got them all for the first round. Uh, check it out. We've got our individual plays, and we've got the consensus plays with Scott and myself and Dave the Dominator. Uh, one low price, ninety-nine bucks for, if you want one of us, but for all three of us and our consensus, buck eighty-nine gets you the entire first round. If we don't win, you get the rest of the tournament absolutely free. So don't forget to get signed up over there. Just check out Winners and Winners. Uh, dot com. We'll throw the link up in the description here for this one. Um, yeah. So because we're covering every game, yeah, because we're covering every game because we have we have premium picks on every game. We're going to talk about two games and we're going to give you basically two premium picks for free. So that's there's really no other way to do it, Scott. <laughs> there's really nothing else we can do. You got 16 no. games, 14 of them are still behind the closed curtain, but. We got to talk about the tournament, so we picked two random games. We're going to talk about it, and nobody and nobody nobody wants to talk about the uh, the Suns. Nobody wants to talk about NBA. Okay, it's just NBA is going to take about a week off, and uh, you know they'll be back again next Tuesday. I'm sure we'll be talking about them then, mm-hmm. but it's March Madness, baby. So let's uh, let's talk about what. Uh, I know this is a game that you, you've been talking about for a while, and uh, up from there in your neckish of the woods as uh, Syracuse takes on San Diego State San Diego State currently sitting as a uh, as a three point dog in this one I'm just double checking favorite you mean uh oh yeah uh, yeah as a, as, a, as a three point favorite sorry they uh, opened it two uh, a little bit of movement towards the Aztecs total's gone from 137 to 139 and a half Scotty um you and I are on different sides of this one and I, 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 I can't believe it because I really thought you were going to be on the orange all the way through. Truth is, I really, really thought about it for a long time. And at the end of the day, I trusted my gut, whether it's going to be right or not. But I just think San Diego State's the better team. Syracuse, I know with Bayheim is always known to go on serious runs in tournaments, and I understand that. But the Syracuse defense with the zone really hasn't worked out, and I'm impressed with San Diego State's defense. I do think it should do a pretty good job. If it protects the three-point line, or in other words, if Bayheim doesn't go crazy, and by Bayheim I mean the Sun, then I think San Diego State should win this game, and I put faith in San Diego State's defense to try to at least limit Bayheim from behind the arc. Now, for the defense, Syracuse plays a zone. I know that it's a unique defense, but it's been pretty awful all season long, so I think you'd agree the defense has been pretty underwhelming. However, I am pretty sure we agree on the total in this one. Do we agree on the total in this one? Yeah, I, I don't know. Do I don't know. It? I expect a decent amount of points in this one. Yeah. Okay. That's. Yeah, I. I think we do agree on that one. Um. So I, like know, the I, just, I keep um, looking at that. That you know that the Syracuse defense, whether they've had success in the Big East or not, I think is a, is a separate question. It's it's certainly a unique defense. It's nothing that San Diego State has gotten to see this year. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna give them troubles and. I don't like the way that San Diego State defends from beyond the arc. This is this is a Syracuse team that can that can drain them from downtown when they get hot. I I like I like the points here. Um, I just I think I think that's a solid play. And I've got to go ahead. I was gonna I'm gonna share something with you, but go go ahead while I find it here for a second. I was gonna say in general, this was the toughest game that I found on the entire card. Whether it was filling out a bracket, whether it was actually placing a bet. And I know in most cases, when you have a real tough time picking a side, you take the points. But I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I watch Syracuse play. I think this team is okay. I've seen San Diego State play numerous times, and I just think that this team just has another gear to them. Syracuse is really, really have just overly reliant on three-point shots. And don't get me wrong, that is a it's somewhat effective way at times to score. But I just think that San Diego State will do a pretty good job making adjustments and I do think that San Diego State does have the superior guards in this matchup, which might sound a little bit surprising because a lot of people look to Bayheim, look to Griffin and those guys. I know Mitchell might not fully count as a guard because he's technically listed as a forward, but you have Mitchell, uh, Shackle, and Gomez. I love all three of those guys. <laughs> like I, I really like their backcourt for San Diego State. Plus, this team is also pretty solid at the line, shooting 72.3% from the line. I know that Syracuse is good at the line, but San Diego State does a really good job of defending. And I am still a little bit up in the air with Syracuse's defense, uh, just with this consistency. I know what I'm getting with San Diego State. I don't know what I'm getting with Syracuse. So it was more just based on consistency. 
and that was why I took San Diego State. But it was really the toughest game, and since we're picking every game and every total, I had to pick something, and I went with the team that I've actually watched a lot of that I actually think is a very good basketball team. So you watched more of San Diego State than you have Syracuse? I actually have. Wow. I watched a lot of Mountain West games. I'm a weakness for staying up at 3 a.m., so I'm watching all the games at 11 on CBS Sports. Yeah, I get that. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, first round favorites of minus one to minus three are just 41 and 46 uh, since 2009 straight up and 30, 53 and four against the spread. That's 36.1%. So that was, that was really kind of the trend that sold it for me. Cause that's a pretty, that's a pretty good body of work. You've got 87 games to work with there. And those small favorites have not fared well in the first round. So I faded the small favorite, buddy. Um, I, I don't, I, I like the way that, uh, Syracuse rebounds the ball, and like I said, I just don't think San Diego State is going to be ready to check out that Sy Syracuse zone. I think it's going to give them more trouble than, than you anticipate. Definitely possible, but I, when in doubt, I like what San Diego State's done all year, and I've kind of made some money off them this season. wasn't going to was going to pull my uh, wasn't going to turn my back on them now. But as for the total, I think that's why I took the over. There has been some line move to the over, which I actually find pretty fascinating which I, I don't know if you agree with me. I was kind of surprised that money has come in on the over in that one. But I've, I don't want to say that's a built-in hedge, but I do feel like if Syracuse does have its way offensively, you should get a lot of points. So I think that yep. there's a good chance that if San Diego State hypothetically does not cover, you have a very good chance to cash the over, where I do think that San Diego State can win this game and the game can still go over. It's mostly just daring Syracuse's defense to actually show up. And even though it was in a low-score game against Virginia because Virginia plays at a very slow pace, Virginia got a ton of open looks the entire game. That's how yeah. that's how I looked at it. Yeah, okay, like, fair enough. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the next game. And, and the other game we're going to look at, it's actually going to be the next uh, game in the betting rotation. And uh, – no, I'm sorry, it's the uh, – The game before that in the rotation. The game before that. I'm sorry, I, start, I, start, I, start, I started backwards, sorry. It's Liberty and Oklahoma State. And this is, I, I think this is going to be an interesting game. That's why, that's why we chose to do it because this is a, this could be a very fun matchup. This game opened up at nine, Oklahoma State favored by nine. It's now down to seven or seven and a half, depending on where you get it. And there's been a huge move on the total, Scott, going down from 145 to 139 and a half. Want to take a swing at the line moves? Well, the truth is that this is actually one of the only spots uh, from the last day that I actually disagree with the line move. I actually like the over in this game and I'm kind of surprised there has been so much money on the under here Liberty of course plays at a slow pace however Oklahoma State plays very fast has a lot of great athletes I don't think Liberty is going to be able to score enough points in the half court against this Oklahoma State defense because you just look at the actual rosters here Oklahoma State's bigger at basically every position the point guard height disparity is about a foot difference it's really crazy when you look at Cunningham uh, in comparison to McKee, they're about a foot apart in terms of height. I think Liberty has to try to get out in transition and has to try to shoot. I don't want to say it's going to be similar to the Michigan State UCLA game, but UCLA who likes to play slow, realized about half about at halftime. What are we doing? <laughs> like we have to try to play fast if we want any shot to win this game. I think Liberty's going to embrace that. And I think we both know Oklahoma State loves to go up and down with Cunningham. I see a lot of three pointers, a lot of shot attempts. And I know that people are expecting the under because Liberty plays slowly. However, Liberty has shown at times, particularly in the conference tournament, that it can play pretty fast. And I have seen them play pretty fast at times. You had the, Bell you had the Bellarmine game, for example, the North Alabama game got into the 150s. And I believe that total is in the 130s, if I'm not mistaken. But I like the over there. I just think that Oklahoma State is a team that can score a lot. And even though it has a good defensive efficiency rating, I don't think the defense is actually as good as people make it out to be. I've watched them play. I don't. I think they give up a ton of open shots, and I think Liberty's good enough to make them. So I actually like the over there. And as for the side, I actually uh, took the points of Liberty Biberty. Uh, I just think it's a few too many points there. I like Oklahoma State. I think they're a pretty good team. But besides Cade Cunningham, I feel like nobody on the roster impresses me at all. And I feel like that's just an issue. They're a little bit too reliant on Cunningham. Now, of course, he's going to be the number one overall pick in the draft. But I actually think Liberty has some guys who can give Oklahoma State some problems. And Liberty also has a decent amount of tournament experience because some, a decent portion of the roster 
was on the team when they made the tournament the last time and they won a game. So I don't think the, the stage will be too bright for them. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State hasn't won a tournament game in, I believe, it, I forgot how many years it's been, six years, I think, they haven't won a tournament game. It's been a minute. It's been a while, but I took the points and I took the over. Well, it's good to know what you've got because this, this is the first time that I've got to find out what your pick was. And I'm, I'm fading you twice. I've got Oklahoma State and I've got the under. This is fun. I'm, 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 I'm chasing the steam there, buddy. I think, I think the, uh, I, I just, this is going to be a Liberty team that's going to want to dictate the pace. Wait, so um, you're chasing but, the steam on the under, but not on the spread. No, I'm, 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 I'm like you with the, I'm like you with the, with the total where you're, where you're going in contra in contrast to the actual move itself. Okay. Uh, I, I like this Oklahoma state team. I've got to see them play a lot um, to say they're, they're a one man show. You know what? It's not exactly accurate. They've got some, they've got some talent. They've got Anderson. They've got like a Lele, um that are I think two two underrated guards. Is he fully healthy? I could have sworn he got a little bit injured in the t- in the conference title game. Well, it, sh- it shows it shows that he's uh, he's not on the he's not on the injury list. They're they're he played thirty three minutes. I just remember him having a brief injury in the first half. But. Yeah, no, and he, it was I think he'd tweak that because he'd been out for you know, four or five games before that. But I think I think having another week to get him healthy is huge. I think I think they're good compliments um, to Cade Cunningham. So um, I like I like Oklahoma State. I, everybody just kind of wrote this team off when they lost in the semis there, and I just I, I like them. I'm, I, I think they lost much... in the final to Texas. I, I watched the game. I, don't get me wrong. Oh, that's, had, that's right. That's right. That's right. Texas yeah, had they... a lot of size. Oklahoma State can rebound, which I thought was an issue. But of course, with Liberty, you don't really have to worry about that to the same degree. No, Liberty's a team that does not rebound the ball at all. Well, I and... think it just bothered me. I know that Oklahoma State has a couple of guys averaging nine plus points per game. They only have two double digit scores in the entire roster. So I do feel like their offense can become a little bit predictable at times where Liberty. Uh, also has two guys uh, who are averaging double digits. So it's kind of the same boat there. But I just think this game's going to be close. Liberty shoots 77.7% from the line. So this team is very good at capitalizing from the charity stripe. And I think that that's going to be very important in this game because Oklahoma State does rank 126th in fouls per game. So I do think Liberty should have some shots at the foul line, plus they shoot 39.1% from the three-point line. That's really going to be the deciding factor. If Liberty can hit their threes, I think they'll cover. If not, I think they'll lose, which I think kind of speaks for itself. But well, and I'm and, and that's that's exactly right. And I'm counting on this uh, Oklahoma State three point defense that allows just twenty nine point seven percent from downtown on the road. Uh, I think Oklahoma State's going to win, but I think the game will come down to the wire. Okay, yeah, I just don't. I just if Liberty's not making their shots, they're not getting any second chances. Uh, I just think this one gets away from them. I think Oklahoma State pulls away in the end. This is a better team, better conference. Liberty's a nice story, but yep, just it's not going to happen. I forgot the exact number I got on the game though for the for the actual pick. I don't remember if it was seven and a half or I actually got like an eight. I don't remember. You didn't write it down? No, I did. I'm saying I didn't have it in front of me. Uh, I, I can. I'll check right now. Right. Uh, anyway, you can. What do I? I got seven and a half. Okay. Cool. Um, as far as and that's and that's really it as far as the, as far as those two go. Um, I just it's, it's interesting that we're we're fading each other. Well, except with the total on Syracuse, uh, the Syracuse game, but yeah, it was one of those things where I thought both games were tough, but I ended up taking the points of the Liberty. I just like that team, uh, Oklahoma State. I do think is good, but I don't know. Just something about it just made. I don't know. I, the more I looked at the game, the more I like Liberty in the matchup, which okay, kind of just sometimes you get sometimes you get a feel. I mean, it's sometimes you can't put your finger on it. You watch them play, you know how they're going to match up. Um, some and sometimes you just at the end of the day, you have to trust your gut. You know, I I, I play I played against my gut with Wichita State. I thought Wichita State was going to be the better team there, and for much of the game they were, but you know, and then Drake should have won it, and that's. We end, I ended up going with Drake because of the line move. So, anyway, ifs and buts, my friend. It's it's early, so we'll see we'll see what happens. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Well, for the most part, um, I did hear reports just in general. If you're filling out your brackets, that McCormick will be back for Kansas on Saturday. So, if you thought about Eastern Washington as an underdog, they can still get it done. But I am going to mention some potential bracket news there. 
he will be back. I know Virginia is going to be traveling to Indianapolis uh, tomorrow, or uh, sorry, on Friday to play Saturday. So they have one day with about one practice in there. So keep that in mind if you want to put Ohio there. Uh, other than that, Oklahoma's missing their second best player I mentioned before. Georgia Tech's missing their best center. So other than that, though, that's kind of the COVID update for the tournament. Um, I heard rumors that Leonard Hamilton, the Florida State coach, might have ruptured his Achilles getting off the team bus. Nice. Which was um, just – that's not going to have any impact on the game. I just found that a kind of interesting side note. But overall, no. It's one of those situations where we got plays in every game, and hopefully we both come out green on the other side. But hopefully I come out a little bit greener. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah, by the way, if you haven't filled your brackets out yet, quick stats there on the 12 versus 5. I know you guys hear this, that the 12s are really the pick over the 5, and actually and they really have been since 2009. Um, they are 27, 27, 14, and 3 against the spread. That's about 66%. And uh, they are 13, 5, and 2 against the spread when they're playing of uh, big dogs, when they're an underdog of 6 points or more. So, Keep an eye out for those 12-5 games. I don't know, are there any 12-5 games where they're uh, at the big spreads? I don't have, I don't have the brackets. You have the Tennessee-Oregon State game where that spread is about eight and a half at this point. Yeah, there you go. So you got that one and – Play some Beavers. Is there another 12-5? That's what um, I, see, I don't have my bracket. I don't have my brackets up in front of me. Um, I'm looking at it. I'm trying to see if there's another 12-5. Uh, you got the win through Villanova again. And so what's it, what's it, five and a half now? Six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah. Okay. But those are the two 12 fives tomorrow. So those are the two. So the, those are the two that fit that criteria. So keep that in mind. Yep. Uh, if you're filling out your brackets or certainly if you're making bets. So, all right, guys. Well, here we go. Here we go. After two years, it is fully here. It is the madness of March. Let it commence. Appreciate you guys watching. As always, don't forget to stop by and check out Winners and Winners. Uh, don't forget to check out more information on our contest where you can get down and uh, kind of back back your favorite capper for see who's hot and ride the wave because i guarantee you at least one of us are going to be hot hopefully hopefully all three of us are hot but hopefully uh but realistically hopefully at least two of us will be hot so especially since scott's fading me every time so hopefully it'll be dave and i that are hot we'll see process of elimination absolutely all right so you guys have a great day as always thanks for watching and uh, we wish you luck on all of your plays today. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money back at the window. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow on Today in Sports Betting. Take care, everybody.